So why am I talking about this disease, frontotemporal dementia? I recently had a patient who just passed away with this diagnosis. She had not reached 60 yet and had been working, in fact, as a healthcare professional a few years before the diagnosis. Her husband was at her bedside until the very end, tending and taking care of her as he watched her soul and being unfortunately with away with this progressive debilitating disease. I'm Dr. John, both certified in both internal medicine and geriatric medicine with over 20 years of experience in healthcare. If you're interested in tips and advice to promote healthy aging, this is the right place for you. So what is frontotemporal dementia? Frontotemporal dementia is a form of dementia which affects the front of your brain and the side of your brain as well. The frontal lobe, as the name implies, is located in the front of the brain and the temporal lobe is located to the side of your brain near your temples. The frontal lobe has many functions and I'll talk about some of these functions in the next couple of minutes. The frontal lobe helps put thoughts into words. So damage to a specific area in the frontal lobe called the Broca's region affects speech and the ability to understand language. It also has some role in forming long-term memory. It plays a role in forming your personality. Therefore, damage to this area affects someone's personality. Some of your loved ones might have been previously reserved, maybe introverted individuals might be acting up or there might be loss of inhibition with hypersexual behavior. Motor skills can also be affected if the frontal lobe is damaged. The skills that control voluntary movements such as walking or running, moving your hands, are controlled by the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is also important for empathy. You might discover that your loved one is not reacting in a usual manner or they are in fact indifferent. The frontal lobe tells me that I'm sitting here. It helps me plan and organize complex tasks. If the frontal lobe is damaged, these are all affected. The temporal lobe plays a role in encoding memory as well as processing auditory information. The temporal lobes also have a role in language processing as well as processing of our emotions. So at what age can we see frontal temporal dementia? Frontal temporal dementia is a common cause of early onset dementia and usually occurs around the age of 60. It has also been reported as early in the 20s and as late as in the 90s. So are there different types of frontal temporal dementias? Yes, in fact, there are three different types. I just think that you should be aware of them. Treatment and approach does not really change. The three types are a behavioral variant of frontotemporal dementia and two forms of primary progressive aphasia, a non-fluent variant of primary progressive aphasia and a somatic variant of primary progressive aphasia. So what causes frontotemporal dementia? Frontotemporal dementia is caused by clumps of abnormal protein called tau forming inside brain cells. They damage the brain cells and stop them from working as they should be. The brain cells are then not able to communicate with each other. Other risk factors are family history and genetics. So what is the difference between dementia, frontotemporal dementia, and the most common type of dementia, which is Alzheimer's dementia? So there are many different types of dementias and distinguishing them is important not only to establish a diagnosis, but the prognosis is different depending on the type of dementia. And it also helps in terms of the choice of medications to help with symptom management of the different dementias. So when I talk about dementia per se, this is very general and this is a very global term. And the analogy I draw is with pain. Pain is also a very general term, but there are different types of pain. You have muscle pain, 
stomach pain, headaches, and all of these types of pain are different and they're also treated differently. Similarly, there are different types of dementia. Patients I talk to and even caregivers ask me, so what will happen to me or what will happen to my loved one as the disease progresses? So the way I see dementia, it's the reverse of aging. And I categorize dementia into mild, moderate, and advanced. So what do you see with teenagers, for example? With teenagers, you see that they're fairly independent, but you need somebody in the background to make sure that you guide them and steer them in the right direction. And they can have mood swings. And these mood swings at times can be quite acute. As dementia progresses from mild to moderate, the analogy is the regression from a teenager towards a toddler. So what do you do with toddlers? With toddlers, you help them put their clothes on, you help them with feeding, you help them with toileting, you help them with um, going to the bathroom. Also, they can have their mood swings and these mood swings can be more acute. I know sharp upturns and downturns as well. And as dementia progresses from moderate to severe or from moderate to advanced, you see this regression from a toddler towards an infant. What do we do with infants? We'll help, we do help them with everything, with feeding, with nourishment, with, with uh, toileting, with going to the bathroom. And when they are in distress, we tend to them and we take care of their needs. The same thing applies with advancing dementia because they need our total help, our total devotion and our total care. So if you're finding value in this video, like, comment and share, might as well hit that notification button and please smash the subscribe button as well. What are the symptoms of frontotemporal dementia? I'll mainly speak about the behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia. It can be socially inappropriate behaviors such as touching strangers or urinating in public or being rude or making offensive remarks, taking away objects or items, Similarly to young toddlers, they might have an oral fixation and place objects in their mouths. Sometimes they fill up their mouths with food and they do not even chew the food. Food cravings might change and they have a liking for very sweet foods. Some behaviors can be very repetitive and even stereotypical such as constantly cleaning or holding, hiding items constantly checking. Some of your loved ones might even have very rigid routines which they do not want to change, which can be extremely tiresome and frustrating for you, the caregiver. Some patients lose empathy with lack of motivation and regressing and becoming extremely passive. This type of apathy can be often mistaken for depression. About 20% of patients also develop a motor neuron disease affecting overall function and movement. But one sentence on the other variant, which is the primary progressive aphasia, this variant is characterized by early loss of language with episodic uh, preservation of overall uh, cognition. And if you're interested in five proven ways to prevent dementia, click on this link above. How do we diagnose frontotemporal dementia? The diagnosis is made clinically and other testing is done just to help exclude other disease entities. The diagnosis is based on physical examination and in particular, a neurological examination. Your doctor might order blood tests to exclude other organic causes such as B12 deficiency. He or she might order a neuropsychological testing early in the course of the disease to evaluate executive function. Neuroimaging testing such as brain scans such as an MRI and glucose positron emission scans are tests to help exclude structural abnormalities and pathologies. So what about prognosis and treatment? Usually from the time of diagnosis and when the time's symptoms begin to when someone passes away, it takes about eight to 10 years. And the behavior variant has a shorter prognosis. 
especially if they have the motor variant of the disease and the prognosis is usually less than two years. Unfortunately, there are no curative drugs. Non-pharmacological approach is emphasized and will require probably multiple and different care members or team members to help with the coordination of care, including physical therapy and occupational therapy, social workers, behavioral therapists, home health coordinators, nurses, dietitians, and home health aides. You can reach out to specialized organizations and associations to help with this coordination of care, and there must be some organizations in your area. Medications can be used, however, they're not curative, they help with symptom management that should be only used if non-pharmacological approaches have helped and have been totally exhausted. And if you're interested in a drug used in Alzheimer's disease, click on this link above. So question of the day, are you taken care of with someone with frontotemporal dementia? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you wanna see more videos, click right here, or click right here, click right here, click right here. Have a good day, and thank you health. Take 300. I need to do the whole thing again. Not happy, not happy, not happy. Take two, final take. I'm going as well as I thought.